Hello, I'm Becky, and I'm 15 years old. I live in a small town that's miles away from anywhere, and well, sometimes it gets a bit dull around here. You know, everything is always the same. Like, get up, go to school, come home, homework, TV, sleep. I don't see my friends as much either. Especially since Corona, as we've stopped going shopping, as we do it online now. And we've stopped going to the cinema, as most things are on apps. But then, it all changed. School was also boring. I was sick of hearing the same opinion from the same three smartest students, and everyone else just kept their heads down or agreed with the teacher. It was always the same routine. Like, classes, lunch, classes, home. And it wasn't just me. Everyone was miserable, and there weren't many smiles in sight. But then one day, our principal unexpectedly came in with a beaming, bright-eyed girl called Ivy. We had a new classmate. And guess what? They put her in the empty seat next to me. Ivy confidently addressed the class and told us how happy she was to be living in a smaller town, rather than the fast pace and chaos of the big city. And the one thing I noticed about her was how happy she was. But I was sure that our teacher's lecture next would soon make her happiness go away. We'd just been talking about climate change and geography, and the same three smartest people did all the talking and the rest of us just sat there quiet. But then suddenly, Ivy spoke up and challenged the three of them. She even said that she had read the same article, and they were just quoting from it. And they'd read it wrong. They went bright red. Then the most amazing thing happened. Ivy passionately told everyone some of her opinions about climate change and then started to ask others what they thought. And get this, the whole class ended up talking and sharing ideas, and they even didn't just agree with the teacher. Ivy had changed the mood in the room completely, and when class had finished, everyone still wanted to discuss it, and Ivy kept smiling the whole time. On our break, as usual, I was with my friends Lily and Ava when Ivy came over. She asked us what we did for fun here, and did we want to go shopping or to the cinema? We admitted that since Corona, we'd gotten a bit lazy about meeting up and normally just went to each other's houses sometimes and watched movies or did some TikToks. Ivy was shocked and said that we had to change that. And the thing is, I knew it was true. Before Corona, we were still too young to do many things. And now, we were used to being either at home or school. So, we all agreed to meet with Ivy at the weekend. And she promised we would do something really fun. For the first time in ages, I was excited to be going out. Finally, it was the weekend, and we all met with Ivy. Ava wanted to go shopping, and Lily wanted to go to the cinema. But Ivy dismissed it as boring and told us to follow her. We ended up in a karaoke bar, and I wasn't sure, as I couldn't sing at all. But Ivy said, who cares? It's just a bit of fun. At first, we were quite inhibited, but after a while, we started giggling as a young man killed a Beatles song. When it was Ivy's turn, she held the microphone like a professional but then sang out of tune without a care in the world. We laughed and laughed. I was hesitant when it was my turn, so Ivy insisted she sing it with me. And we sang, and I laughed so much that I had tears. And thanks to Ivy, we all love karaoke now. We couldn't wait to go to karaoke again, and arranged to go the weekend after. To add more fun, Ivy suggested that we all dress up in 60s style, and we loved it. So much so that we lost track of time and everyone got home late. I didn't think it would be a big deal, as I was always home on time normally. But my mom commented that she wondered if Ivy was a bad influence on us. It was Ava's birthday party soon, and she invited the whole class to her birthday party. For the party, Ava's mom had prepared a non-alcoholic punch and some snacks. She told us all not to let things get too wild before she went to work. She was a nurse and working the late shift. She said the party would be over when she got back from work at 10 p.m., so we should tell our parents they could pick us up then. We all had a lot of fun at the party and started playing our playlists to each other and dancing. Ivy said the punch tasted great, almost like the real thing, but it wasn't for me. Yuck. Ivy raised a toast to all of us, and we danced and laughed and didn't care. But then the atmosphere turned strange, and people danced more wildly and shouted rather than talked. At some point, the neighbors rang the bell and said it was too loud. Ivy cleverly suggested that we all use headphones and have a silent disco. We all listened to our own music, so danced to different beats. It was hilarious. We were having so much fun that we didn't even realize Ava's mom had come home. 
I didn't realize that Ivy was throwing up in the bathroom. Three of the boys were lying on the sofa snoring, and the rest of us were staggering as we tried to dance. Ava's mom insisted someone breathe on her, and she said she smelled alcohol. Ivy hiccuped, then tried to talk, but ended up just slurring, and, well, who knows what she said. And you'll never believe what Ivy did. She hugged Ava's outraged mom, and she had to hold her up. I had to stop myself from laughing. But Ava's mom was not laughing. She said, who put alcohol in the punch? And everyone just looked at each other. We had no idea. But the next day, we found out that the parents had been in touch with each other, including my mom, and decided that the newcomer Ivy must be the culprit because nothing like this had happened before. Mom insisted I couldn't be friends with Ivy anymore. Ivy insisted this was nonsense and that she would like to know who put the alcohol in the bowl. She said, come on, don't be cowards. Tell me. But nobody confessed. I felt sorry for Ivy. She had brought so much excitement and a much-needed change to our lives and made us have fun again. Now Ava, Lily, and I had to distance ourselves from her. Ivy's happy disposition and smile disappeared. Mom also told me that she'd read in an article that Ivy's actions were typical of children who change schools. She was a bit shocked when I told her that I had read the same article and she had it wrong. It was rare. The next afternoon, I was walking past the gym windows when I overheard Tom telling Julian that he didn't mean to put that much gin in the punch. I heard Julian quickly reply how no one must know. I immediately went to Lily and Ava and told them what I had heard. We knew that there was a parents' evening soon at the school. We planned to get them to admit what they did in front of everyone and prove that Ivy was innocent. At the parents' evening, we waited for the right time. Then Ava nervously stood in front of the class. Her mom shocked. Ava told everyone that what happened to Ivy was not okay. Just being accused without any evidence and being labeled a bad influence. All because she was new. Ava then pointed to a bright red Tom and Julian. Ava said that I'd overheard them admit it Now it was their chance to put things right. And then I went bright red. At first, they denied it. So I got up and started telling everyone exactly what they had said. And I didn't care. Then, unexpectedly, Tom told Ivy he hadn't meant to get her in trouble, and he was sorry. But I hadn't finished. I turned and addressed the parents, and my mom's mouth dropped wide open in shock. I told them that Ivy's cheerful and playful nature had reminded us of our youth that we lost so much of in the pandemic. But your hasty judgment of her and your lack of understanding was not okay. You should have given Ivy a chance to tell her side. Everyone was silent and stared at me blankly. But then I noticed Ivy looking at me with the biggest smile I've ever seen on her. Ava's mom said, You're right. That wasn't okay of us. She said sorry to Ivy, and they hugged. Properly, this time. It's been really great ever since. Our whole class has gotten a lot closer after what happened, and everyone makes more effort to join in the discussions and stick up for each other. Ivy was the best thing that could have happened to us, and we're really glad she's still here. So, I hope you enjoyed my story. What was it like for you after COVID? Have you ever had a friend that changed your life? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to keep smiling.